Welcome back to the Pentest Workshop. In this video, we're going to climb Mount Olympus. This box was a lot of fun. I love the theme of this machine. Uh, the steps weren't exactly obvious, but there was hints along the way, and the hints were spot on. There's a great flow to it. We'll do some Googling to find a username, which is not on the box, but we find it through open source intelligence. Then we get to do a DNS zone transfer, which I don't think we've done before in these videos. That leads us straight into a port knocking exercise, and we'll write a bash script. We'll use nmap to do that for us. We'll use Metasploit to do a Docker privilege escalation. It's a lot of fun. We're going to run pretty much straight through it, so let's get started. And we start at the HTB retired console. We're going to add a host. The IP address is 10.10.10.83. 10, 10, the name is Olympus. Server, we know it's Linux. Add host. So of course we're going to need some ports and we'll run the TCP top 1000. Make a couple of directories here and let this run. All right, looks like we've got three ports open. Jump back to our pen test workshop and we'll just import that file real quick. Okay, so we've got 53, which is DNS, 80, HTTP, and SSH looks like it's been moved to port 2222. So we're going to start at HTTP. Open this up in our browser, and we don't see much, just a picture of uh, Zeus, it looks like. Yep. So we'll get some enumeration started. We'll run our dir search. And I can tell you right now, this isn't going to come back with anything. So one of the tools that I don't normally run is Nictu. It takes forever, but in this case, it's actually pretty useful. So we're going to run this Nictu command. And one of the first things that comes back is this uncommon header, xdebug found, 255. So we'll cancel out of that. Let's go find out what this xdebug is by searching the exploit DB. And we get a hit, 255. That looks promising. This is a Metasploit module. This is an unauthenticated OS command execution, which is exactly what we want. Let's make sure that our service is started. Go ahead and cancel this. And if we just search for xdebug, we should get that module that we saw earlier. And let's give it a our host 10 10 10 83. We need to set the L port for our interpreter or the L host, I mean. Looks like we're ready to go. Go ahead and run it and see what happens. Looks like we're on the box. Go ahead and say get UID. We're the www data. And where are we? Let's see if we can upgrade this shell. We'll try Python 2. Not found. Python 3 not found. So we'll just deal with this shell that we have here. First thing we want to do is take a look at what's here. This is why the dir search wasn't going to come back with anything. There's really nothing in the www data. So if we switch into the home directory and we'll see what's around. There's a Zeus folder. Great. Uh, Air Geddon. Don't know what that is. Let's check it out. And this looks like some sort of a wireless capture utility. So we're going to take a look at this directory called captured. And sure enough, looks like we have a packet capture, capture.pack.cap. Let's take a look at this papyrus real quick. Captured while flying. I'll banish him to Olympia Zeus. All right. Let's go ahead and bring this captured file over to our host machine here. 
we're just going to use netcat to do that we're going to listen on 4545 anything that comes into this port we're going to dump into capture.cap file and over here we're going to say connect to 10 10 uh, 14 8 I think is me yep four five four five and dump into that connection the capture.cap file let this finish this doesn't exit when it's done if we take a look at the size of the file we can see we've captured the whole thing so we can go ahead and kill this kill this on this end great now we could open this captured.cap file up in something like Wireshark, actually go through it and trace a bunch of TCP streams. Easier way to do that is just simply run strings on it and we'll get uh, basically the strings that are in the file. It's exactly what that utility does. And too close to the sun. That suspiciously looks like a password. So we're going to copy this and keep a record of that in our host. add creds. We don't know the username yet, so we'll just dump that into a password. Great. But we need a username for this password. And we were in... Oops, we lost our shell. There's a Zeus user, so let's go ahead and give that a try. We're just going to assume that this is an SSH password. Remember we're on port 2222. Zeus at 10 10 10 83. Copy this. Paste that in. And that doesn't work. So it's not the Zeus user. Let's uh, get, and pass WD, see what else is around. and that appears to be the only user on this account on this server but if we take a look at the IP address we're in a docker environment confirmed by the dot docker environment file in the root file system So if we keep doing some enumeration on the machine, we're not going to find the username that we want. But we know that this is having a Greek mythology theme, the Crete Island, Olympus. Uh, we saw Zeus earlier. So let's Google Greek mythology uh, too close to the sun. And the first thing that comes back is Icarus. So that seems pretty fitting. Let's try the Icarus username. Do this again. Icarus. Make sure we get the right password. Paste that in. And we're on. So that was Icarus's password. Okay, well, we're on the Icarus account. We can kill this. Exit, exit, exit. And let's make a note that this is SSH Icarus. All right, let's go back to our shell and let's see what Icarus has to tell us. Uh, no user.txt file, but we have a help of the gods see what's in there. Athena Goddess will guide you through the dark. Way to Rhodes. Okay, city, city, CTF, capture the flag, Olympus, HTB. Now we're going to use this with one of the other services that we saw during our Nmap scan, and that's the DNS. Open up a new tab, and we want to pull information about that domain from the domain server. Uh, because this is a TCP port and not a UDP port, we can try to do a zone transfer. And that's basically telling our computer to download all of the DNS information about that domain from the DNS server. 
And the way we do that is run the dig command, AXFR, for a, a domain transfer. 10, 10, 10, 83, paste in our domain name. And we get back all of the information that that DNS server has about the CTF Olympus HTB domain. We have a text record referencing Prometheus. It says open a temporal portal to Hades. And those could be port numbers. And then it looks like another password. So first let's make sure that we keep a record of the password. And this is for Prometheus. And these are three numbers in the port number range. So a temporal portal, we're going to guess that this is a port knocking exercise, which means we need to send one packet and one packet only to these three ports in order. Uh, there's a very common Linux package called knockdaemon, which does this easily on the server side. You just set up some configuration files and what that does is refuse connections on a port that would otherwise be open until packets get sent to each of these and then it opens that port to the IP address for a short amount of time, 30 seconds, 60 seconds, um, whatever you set it to. So we need a way to send packets to these ports and to do that we're going to write a short little bash script and use nmap to do that for us. So we'll create a new file, we'll call this knock.sh. We're going to say bin bash. Uh, our host is going to be equal to the first argument on our command line and then we'll do a shift. And what that does is shift the arguments because we've already used argument one, so we'll just shift everything to the left. So argument two becomes argument one and so forth. And we're going to say for argument in dollar at do, and this is where we use nmap. And we're going to say don't ping it. And our host timeout is 100, so it's a very short timeout. We're going to say max retries is zero. We don't want nmap trying to continuously contact this port. And the port that we're going to talk to is the first argument after the host in our command line. And then we're going to give it host. And what that will do is tell nmap just send a packet to this port and we're going to step through the arguments which will be our port numbers that we put on the command line and hopefully that will open up the port. So to show this, if we run a quick nmap scan against 10, 10, 10, 83, we've got 5380 and 2222 open, but port 22 is filtered. So if we run our port knocking script here against 10, 10, 10, 83, scroll back up and grab our three ports, we'll see nmap go through each port, send one packet, and now when we scan the host, Port 22 is still filtered. Let's try that again. Now it's open. Now we've got port 22 is open. And we might have just closed it by doing that nmap scan, but we're going to try to connect anyways. So SSH Prometheus at 10, 10, 10, 83. We'll see if the port's still open. If it's not, we'll just knock again, open up the port, and then we should be able to connect. Let's load up our password. And sure enough, looks like our port has been closed. So we'll cancel out of that. Run the knock again. SSH. And
and we don't get in. Now at this point, when I was originally doing this box, this frustrated the heck out of me. Uh, it's actually a very simple thing to fix. If you scroll back up, we can see when we copied this password, we didn't copy the exclamation point. I can't tell you how long I spent on this until I figured that one out. Let's go and update our password. Put that exclamation point on at the end. It's very sneaky. So let's see if our port's still open. It's not. So let's run our port knock again. Open up the port again. And now SSH. Paste in the password with the ex exclamation point, And we're finally in as Prometheus. And we're in his home directory. Let's take a look at what's there. And finally, we get the user.txt flag. Excellent. We're not done yet. We've got to get up to root. So let's take a look at what the message of the gods say. Only if you serve well the gods, you'll be able to enter into Olympus. So we'll do some basic recon. Get and pass WD. The reason I've started doing this git ent instead of just catting the past wd file, I ran into a box the other day that had a deleted user, it didn't show up in past wd. For whatever reason, the git ent seems to be a little bit more reliable of listing, listing the users. So let's see what groups we're in. And the one that sticks out is this docker group. So this is usually a group that gives your user administrative rights when you're setting up the docker and it should be removed when you move the docker into production if you google docker group danger uh, you'll find this article and a bunch of others i'm sure that explain exactly um, why being part of the docker group can be dangerous for priv privilege escalation um, that's exactly what we're going to use it for so we're going to switch back into Metasploit, and if we search Docker, we've got uh, exploit Linux local Docker privilege escalation. Great. So we need an active session. Uh, I tried to use the SSH login module to just create a, a session. It's not terribly reliable when we're using this particular Docker escalation module. So what we're going to do is use MSF Venom and download that to the server, get back a reverse meterpreter shell, and then use that session to do our escalation. So let's get the Venom built. We want Linux. I think this is a 64-bit machine. We want a meterpreter, reverse TCP. That's the one. Uh, our IP address is 10.10.14.8. Let's do 4.4.4.4. We don't need any coders, but we want an ELF, which is a Linux binary. We're going to call this Rev 18.4.14.8. And here's our MSF Venom command that we want. So we need to run this on our local machine. And there we go. So to transfer this over, we'll go back to netcat. Let's do 4646. Pipe into that rev 8148. Switch into our temp directory. Let's make our own temp directory. And let's grab that file. Again, this netcat command doesn't actually finish. It's very small, so I'm sure it's done. And it looks like we've got it. So when we run this, we should get back an interpreter session, which we need to start up. So let's load the handler. And there we go.
give this execution and run it. Stage is loading. There we go. I had to run it a couple of times, but we've got our interpreter session as the same user. So let's background that. We can see we've got session number two. We'll go back and use this exploit. which needed a session, so we'll set session to two. And go ahead and run it. Cancel out of that. Looks like we've got the wrong IP address in our payload and the wrong payload. So set payload, Linux x64, interpreter reverse set l host 10 0 nope didn't like that set l host 10 10 14 8 now that looks correct we've got interpreter session 3 still the same user which is interesting but we've got this effective user id of 0 so when we drop into a shell and we see ID, we're still the Prometheus user, but our effective user ID is root. So we have a root shell. If we tried to upgrade our shell and run bin bash, we've got a cleaner shell, but it drops the effective user ID. So we're no longer root. So we'll just drop back into our bare shell see where we're at, change into roots directory, and now we can read the root flag. So that's it, we are root. Let's exit out of this. We'll do some proper house cleaning here. Exit, yes. Exit, kill this, back up one, and we wanna remove our temp directory. Just keeping the server nice and clean. Switch over here, mark this off as being completed. And that's that. So pretty straightforward. You can see how the Olympus machine is, goes from step to step. There's hints along the way. We did a zone transfer, which was really cool. We ran Nikdu, which we don't usually I don't usually do because it takes so long. I can usually do find out information the other way, but it turns out that this that was the key that led us to the xdebug header. We did some Googling about the password that we found. That's how we got onto the Icarus user. And at the very end, we used Metasploit to do a Docker escape because we were part of the Docker group, which is a big red flag if anytime you see that. That's a good sign that you can do things that you shouldn't normally be able to do as a lower privileged user. So that was Mount Olympus using the Pentest Workshop. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.